that was a pretty easy launch. Getting ready to pass over Great Valley High School. Good look at the uh, track right there. I think after I fly over this high school, I'm going to go check out that quarry over there. There's a good look at an airplane. I'm only at about 1,500 feet, so he's got about 4,000 feet on me, and he's headed into Philadelphia, just for everyone's knowledge. I am within the 30-mile uh, nautical mile radius of Philadelphia Airport, so my ceiling is 3,500 feet right here, which means I cannot go above 3,500 feet. Never flown over a quarry before, it's kind of cool. A little bit bumpy, probably the wind coming up off the walls. Thought I'd give you guys a uh, different perspective. Take the camera off my helmet, put it on the uh, selfie stick. So I get a lot of questions on my YouTube channel about different things. I also get a lot of questions from people on the ground after I've landed. Thought maybe I'd try to answer some of those. One of the biggest questions I get is, how long can you stay up in that thing? The answer depends on how much fuel you have, the wind, so it's a, it's a variable answer. But typically speaking, several hours. My particular tank is an extra large tank, it holds almost five gallons of fuel, so... I could stay up for about five or six hours. I don't typically take off with a full tank of gas because it just makes the machine that much heavier on my back. Another question people have, how much does this thing weigh on my back? The answer is about 60 pounds, between 60 and 70 depending on, well between about 55 and 70 depending on how much gas I have in it. A lot of people want to know, what happens if the motor cuts off on you? And my answer is nothing, I just glide back down to the ground and land. As a matter of fact, I land 99% of the time with the motor off. So, as I have stated many times on my channel, a power out is not a problem in the air. Other people want to know, how high can you go? My personal record is just over 10,000 feet, but I know people that have gone higher than that. The legal limit in Class G airspace is 18,000 feet. Um, it would have to be perfect conditions to get up that high. Uh, I don't even think my motor would uh, make it that high. As a matter of fact, when I went up to 10,000 feet, the motor cut out on me after I let off the engine and put it back down to idle. That's because the air, the oxygen, is not the same as it is down on the ground level. And where I take off and land, I'm at about 600 feet above the sea level. How safe is it? Pretty safe. It's really safe. Um, you know, I always tell people you have to have proper, well, you always should have proper training, and that I am a big believer in. I got really good training, and um, I continue to talk to my instructor. As a matter of fact, he was here today when I took off. I don't still... Um, take lessons from him per se, but I do talk to him all the time and it's good to get uh, a good conversation going with him all the time.
other people ask, what kind of gas do you run in that thing? I run aviation fuel. People call it av gas. It's also called 100 low lead. So it's 100 octane. I mix it with uh, purely synthetic two-stroke oil. And I mix it about 45 parts gas to one part oil. How do you steer? I have brake toggles here that when I pull down the brake, it'll turn me to the right. If I turn the other brake, it'll turn me to the left. And if I fly just hands free, hopefully I'm flying level flight, not turning right or left. Some other questions that people ask are, doesn't it get cold up there? The answer is yes. Right now I'm about 1,200 feet and it's pretty chilly right here. It was only about 65 degrees taking off today, so um, it's probably about 50, mid-50s up here right now. Especially since I always have a breeze in my face. Other questions people ask, how fast can you go? Well, that's, that's really a limitation on the wing that you're flying. The limitation of my wing, well, the speed limit of my wing is about 22 miles an hour. That's with the trim set at neutral. I can let the trims out, which changes the shape of the wing. It allows the wing to fly faster through the air. So, people assume, people assume that when you have full thrust, that you can just go faster. That's not the case. Full thrust will only give you lift. So, now that I've let off the thrust, or the accelerator, or the throttle, and I'm at idle, I'm just going into a slow sink, but I haven't changed my speed. My speed has remained constant. The only thing that's going to change my speed is letting out the trims. That'll allow my wing to fly faster through the air. Now, another factor of how fast you're going, I guess, relative to the ground would be wind speed. So if I'm headed into a five mile an hour wind, I'm only making about 17 miles an hour across the ground. If I'm flying with the wind, then I'm going about 27 miles across the ground. Again, at neutral trim positions. People ask, where can you take off? Do you have to fly at an airport? Nope. You can fly at an open field. The one I fly from today is a, is a park. The township lets us use that park. But really, any open field, as long as you're abiding by FAA airspace rules, then uh, you should be good. All right. I think that's probably a good, good enough Q&A session here.